Hi, I'm Gavin Syme. And I'm Vivian Corrigan, and welcome to Perthshire Online TV. So, have you recovered from the weekend? God, I tell you, it was... It, it was it was a long day, wasn't it? it Saturday, was. Saturday was a long day. We were we were down filming on the North Inch Taste Street. We were compiling a whole lot of stuff for a, a specific little feature next week on the Diamond Jubilee weekend, and it was it was a long day. It was, and I'm telling you, I'm really glad I took your advice. No high heels, because I would have been up to my knees on that North Inch in the in the mud in the in the damp what grass. Are you, uh, Vivian manages to pick the best places to go to because, you know, there's the, there's the North Inch and there was the lovely um, day at the races yes, as well. Yes, yes, so. you always send me out. I get sent out all the all the wet and damp jobs <laughs> and, and you've got all the nice things to do. Anyway, so this week we've got Ian Miller from Perth and Kinross Council. Now, as, as you know, there was a new administration came in from Perth and Kinross Council just um, a couple of weeks ago and um, Ian was actually talking about the, um, the Perth and Kinross Council agenda moving forward. So, very much from us council business perspective and, and, and we touched on a few subjects which I think you'll, you'll be interested to hear about and I had a great interview. I had a great interview. Yes I know I heard. I heard. With Cassidy. K-A-S-S-I-D-Y. Cassidy. Absolutely fantastic. Cool bunch of guys. They were a um, they were at the Perth Festival of the Arts yeah. and they had a concert on um, just a, a week past on Friday and a really cool bunch of guys. I was quite I was quite How come you got actually. that job and I never? Well I'd have liked that one. I, I could be cool. I, I didn't bother asking whether you wanted the interview. I just I just kinda of went in and did it. Are you saying I, you're cooler than me? Yeah. No, it wasn't there was that it was that really good weekend and Vivian decided that she was going to go away for the weekend. So I just thought she'd skipped away off. Sort of Friday lunchtime or something. So, um, but we we caught them at the um, at the concert hall in the in the dressing room when they arrived in Perth, and we um, <coughs> excuse me, and we um, also got them in a PA at uh, HMV Very as well. Good. So it was really good, actually. Really cool bunch of guys. Right. I mean, eighteen and a half thousand Facebook followers. They're, they're that kind of ranking yeah. uh, in, in in Scotland at this point. Excellent. So, so the show this week is all you, 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 isn't it? <sighs> yeah. Yes. It is. So as we say. It's on with my show this week. <laughs> I'm delighted today to be joined by Ian Miller, who is, as you know, is the leader of Perth and Ross Council. Ian, welcome to the show. Thanks for the invitation. Ian, um, let's let's pick up on um, Perth and Kinross Council as a, as an entity and, and some of the challenges that it, that it has moving forward as, a, as an organisation for the people of Perth and Kinross. Um, you, you've recently gone into new administration. Mm -hmm. what, what do you see as the leader of the council as some of the key challenges moving forward over the next few years? I think the key thing is actually to build on the success that we've already had over the last five years. Um, we've done a number of things over the last five years, including obviously in conjunction with the Scottish Government freezing the council tax. That's mm -hmm. been a huge benefit to, to hard-pressed families across Perth and Kinross. And I think uh, that's something we want to ensure goes on and, mm -hmm. uh, and, and we will freeze that council tax for, uh, you know, for the five years of our, of our term. So that's, that's the first thing. But there's a number of policy initiatives that uh, we see as, as being key. And uh, the first of these is to build uh, and to improve as many schools as possible across Perth and Kinross. Right. Uh -huh. You're probably aware that we've just opened six new campuses across mm -hmm. the county, mm -hmm. um, but uh, we've put £62 million pounds of new money into, wow. into building uh, and improving uh, schools across the county as well. So mm -hmm. that's a further programme mm -hmm. uh, which will uh, hopefully give us the, the, the best uh, educational facilities uh, that we can possibly provide in Perth and Kinross. And there was, and I mean, I see there's, there's quite a lot of initiatives, uh, good initiatives coming out from the education um, team as well. We had some mm -hmm. of them in recently about some internet security stuff for, mm -hmm. for kids and things that they were doing and the parents Absolutely. as well, which, yeah. is, which is very innovative. Huge amount of work going on and I think I'm very proud of the way that our education service have actually taken all of this forward. Uh, I think uh, the the, the, we live in the world of the internet nowadays, you know, things have moved on, we need to be up to date and I think that's the key thrust of what we're trying to do in Perth and Kinross. But I think the, the new buildings that we were, you know, we're putting a new school into Creef for example, we're putting a new school into Invergowrie, uh, a new school into Ayleth and all of these things actually help the infrastructure that we have as well because some of the schools that we have, let's face it, are um, 
um, slightly dated mm. and, uh, and and do need improvement. Yeah. So we've, t- we've t- picked up on um, council tax fees, we've picked up investment in education. Mm-hmm. Um, any, anything else? Well, so indeed, uh, I mean, we, we're putting £60 million pounds into building and uh, providing new council houses. Uh, mm-hmm. Now, it's only recently that we started building council houses again. I think uh, first that we've the first that we've built in Perth and Ross for a generation, in fact, and uh, I think uh, you know that investment will make sure that uh, families are able to access uh, rented accommodation within Perth and Ross. Uh, I think in, on a daily basis, I get people complaining to me or, or approaching me uh, about housing issues in Perth and Ross. There simply is a huge lack of uh, affordable housing in Perth and Ross. So this initiative uh, to, to build new council houses, I think, is the right thing to do. And uh, it will provide, uh, you know, mm-hmm. affordable accommodation for for many people across the county. Mm-hmm. If we if we look at we're talking about buildings at this point in time, so let's mm-hmm. hit on a, um, a, a contentious um, topic: mm-hmm. uh, the city hall. Indeed. Well, we've just had the uh, the information from Historic Scotland mm-hmm. that they, they have not granted our application to uh, demolish the hall and create a new city square in uh, in its place, but. Uh, there are certain caveats within that. We need to examine the, the, the actual decision that they've made and we'll keep open dialogue obviously with uh, Historic Scotland to see whether or not we can uh, find a solution to this issue because it's, as you know it's been a long running mm-hmm. uh, a long running issue in Perth and uh, we, need, we need to get the resolution to it and I'm determined that we actually take that forward as a matter of priority in the new administration. If we, if we move away from just the City Hall um, side of things and actually look at the at now the, not the town centre, the, let's refer to it as the city centre. Mm-hmm. We've got a real swings and roundabouts mm-hmm. of, mm-hmm. of views on that, haven't we? Because there's some people that are very rah, rah, rah and there's lots of activity going with new retailers coming Indeed. in mm-hmm. and some businesses setting Indeed. up. We've got, we've got other people that are on completely the other side of the fence that kind of feel that, you know, all the pedestrianisation has ruined mm-hmm. the, the city centre and um, it's just flat and is a, a a centre in crisis. What's your thoughts on that? Well, I think you can only compare Perth with uh, similar uh, towns and cities uh, across the country. And uh, I think if you do that, uh, the, the facts show that Perth and Kinross is actually, or Perth, the city of Perth, is actually faring much better uh, than, than any other country, uh, any other town across the country. Um, there are less uh, vacant properties in Perth uh, than there are in other places. That's simply the factual situation. But I know that any empty shop obviously creates a bad impression. So we will, as a matter of, of priority in the council, be, be looking at how we can actually enhance the centre of the town uh, and come up with new proposals to, 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 to get things moving. Do you see that as being a key agenda item moving forward? Absolutely. And uh, things will become apparent in the next few weeks. Uh, we certainly are working on a plan to, to enhance the, the centre of the city. Um, I think it deserves that. We've just uh, achieved the accolade yes, of city exactly, status exactly. And, and we need to do something to, 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 to upgrade the, the facilities and, and the look of the, the centre of the town. Um, I had hoped, obviously, that uh, we would have a new city square, which would have been a new focal point yeah. and a new driver for, uh, for economic activity in the city. But uh, uh, it appears at the moment as if that's not on the agenda. Yeah. So we need to look to other are, things that we can do. We are, you know? we are where we are on it, and we've just got to move forward. Absolutely. Yeah. Ian, listen, thank you very much for your time today. You're very welcome. Fairways provide cost effective HR support from contracts to recruitment, health and safety to training. Fairways, working with you, for you. Visit fairways uk.com or call Perth 632 561 for a free consultation. I did it fairways. So we're just about to come on to Cassidy at this point in time, but it was nice hearing from Ian, wasn't it? I think they've got a really sound agenda moving forward. One of the things one of the things I have a great passion about is, um, I don't know about you, Vivian, but one of the great passions I have is the empty shops in Perth. I and know. It's, I know. It, it's difficult because, uh, you know, statistically we're, we've not got a huge percentage, but perception is reality a little bit, yes, isn't it? Yes, it is. And it's sad when you walk down the high street and, well, it's... It has lost a bit of the, the, the bustle and the hubbub that it used the to have. The perfect glamour, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. It is. and I mean, it is really good that there, you know, there are businesses that are working really hard and new, uh, new premises opening up, but it is sad, especially kind of the top end of the high street. There's quite a lot I know, empty, I know, I know. It's that, it's that top bit from uh, Canoole, is it Canoole Street up to 
up to Methven Street, yeah. it's kind of a bit, a wee bit challenged it is, up there. It's isn't very it, really challenged, and yet it never used to be like that. So, and what do you think about the city hall? Well, I know, I know, we're getting into, <coughs> yeah. I know we're getting into a really political comment at this point in time, and, and I like I've, to stay I, neutral. I, I've had a few Facebook rants and arguments with some uh -huh. people as well about the whole situation, but I want to make it quite clear um, that I've no agenda one way or the other to some extent. Uh, all, all I would like to see is if it's a piazza, or if it, or if it's actually going to stay, then make a viable business yeah, because, would, because, because yeah. otherwise we're going to be sitting here six years from now with with a failed business yeah, and yeah. a destructive Well it's and a, a big and a white failed. elephant at the moment yeah. isn't it? I mean it's empty, it doesn't do anything and it is a shame you know either if it was if it was coming down fine but it's not, it's staying so let's make it work let's, let's make, make it, it something do really something viable, yeah, exactly. and, and get life around there and, and all the beautiful restaurants that are around there you know it could really add a lot to them as well couldn't it? You know, um, really? You trot around there all the time, didn't you? Your favourite food feature. I you do, know. I know. I've eaten my way around St John's Place. <laughs> <laughs> so let's see how you got on with Cassidy. Well, here we are at Perth Concert Hall. It's the, um, the middle of the Perth Festival of the Arts, and I'm delighted that we're actually here in the um, in the, the room with Scottish band Cassidy. Guys, welcome to Perth Online TV. Yeah. Now, I know it's Barry, Hamish, Lewis, and Chris. So. Can we quiz round and everybody introduce themselves? Mm -hmm. Start with myself. Start with yourself. Yeah, I'm Barry James from Cassidy. Yeah, I'm Hamish. I'm Chris. I'm Lewis. Well, welcome to Perth, guys. Have you been Have you been here before? Yes, we've been here for, uh, I don't think we've played. No, we've not played, we've played twa times. I think that's a final That's definitely Perth. It's one of those, yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely one of those final times in Perth, yeah. Um, so, guys, you were you were formed for for those of personal viewers and beyond that, that maybe don't know too much about you. You were formed in late two thousand and nine. What was the? How did you get together? Did you did you all know each other from independent bands, or had you sort of grown up together, or what yeah. was the background? We, we had a a, a vicarious relationship between each other through the hammers. Right. Um, we all would end up we all kind of occasionally stay at Hamish's flat in town in Glasgow. Um, without kind of knowing each other, but we see each other passingly. Uh -huh. um, and it was just one of these things, because there's four musicians in the one flat at the same time, we'd always end up playing music together, and, and that, that uh, just evolved into the band that it is now. And how are things going at this point in time? You released your second album, and One Man Army, at the end of April there. How's, how's things going? Because I know you're on a sort of little mini tour at this point in time as well, aren't you? Well, yeah, I think everything's going fine. Just to put our second album there and uh, thinking this is pretty much exactly what we wanted to sound like in the first album. So now that we've got here, we're pretty comfortable and happy where we're going. So, yeah. Uh, where, 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 where do you see things moving forward with that? Just more music. Mm -hmm. More music and more bigger, better live shows and more music for me. And you, is, it, is the two purely just um, Scotland at this point in time? Or I seem to remember you were, were you doing something in Amsterdam as well. Yeah, we were in Amsterdam the well, not like three days ago, I don't know how long ago, it feels like about three days ago, we were there for a show called London Calling at the Paradiso, which was uh, fantastic, it was the first time uh, we played a gig in Europe, excluding a, a festival that was done in Switzerland before, but um, it was amazing just the, how people react differently to music over there and just how it, it seems I don't know, they just seem to love music and it was just a nice thing, it just shows that that, say, that music is the one universal language that everyone speaks and it's true because it brings people together it did very much so that I should have. So how, how do you pull together what it is you do? Is it, is it, I mean, is the inspiration that comes from somewhere, is it, is it life or is it just, is it some, do you each independently have some input into things or is it, does it just kind of form together when, when before you get together? I think it just works when it works really. There's no set of formula, I don't think. I think the best way to be creative is just to be open to any kind of anything. anything. Mm -hmm. And then just like we're all influenced by each other, we're all influenced by different things and we plateau out some certain things so we come together and we write what we love to play. Mm -hmm. you know? so. That's funny when you were saying is that a folk rock band earlier, it's like, well, you can't really define it exactly because it's not it's folk rock. Cause there's, like, if you come to the show the night, like, the first couple of songs that we play, the furthest thing away from folk, you know, right, so yeah. 
it's like that's that's like rock music that we're playing there. But then there's like there's rock, there's pop, there's some folk, there's some country, there's some blues. It's like mm. it's just I said to you, it's like the four four different songwriters all coming together. So it's, it's more like a collaboration band, doesn't it? Right. Like, which comes up with songs which don't necessarily have a genre, but we agree on the on, on the songs of all. You know. Because there was one article that I read that referred to you as the, um, as the, um, I hear you take that. Yeah. So I don't know whether that's a compliment or not to some extent. <laughs> no, I don't know if it's an insult. If you see take that as a band who, uh, can, I've been trying to work for like, what, 10, 15 years now, and it's all work that, uh, you, some people will like, some people won't like, but you can appreciate it as the songwriting abilities and the, last couple of albums have got unbelievable songs on it, whether you think it's a cool band or not a cool band, the songwriting on it's fantastic. And if and obviously it's not comparing it like that, but I see it as like, well, you know what, if we're getting compared to people who are pretty much professional songwriters, I don't care about that, you know. And you brought you brought when I mean, we've had pretty pretty mixed weather, you brought great sunshine down to Perth here on, on, on Friday, so on. All the best with the, with the, with the show tonight. Enjoy Perth. I know you're here probably, what, just till, till tomorrow morning and then zipping off somewhere else with the yeah. something tomorrow night? Edinburgh. 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 Yeah. And, then, and, and, and for, for, for how long? About another, another week or so? Yeah, I think next week we head to England. Yeah, yeah, there's Edinburgh twice tomorrow and the day after, and then we're playing in Dunfermline. There's a day off, and then there's some English days, a bit of time off, and then. Festivals. Uh, yeah. I think we play Rock Nest and then we go to Europe and so it's it's, okay, so it's a busy it's, it's a busy summer ahead. Well listen, all the best over in Europe and south of the border but yeah. um all the very best for the concert and welcome to Perth. Thank, thank you, you very much. Thank, thank you. you.
part of the Dream Team makeover and our package will consist of um, a closed door shopping night for the, the prize winner. They can have a glass of champagne in hand for the brown. They will be able to pick a day outfit and an evening outfit of choice from our variety of labels. Uh, we'll also be on hand to help them pick that fantastic outfit for them as well. They can have a fantastic pair of shoes and they'll also get a selection of pistol couture bangles. Uh, with that final bit of length to add to that finishing night bit. I have the prize of all, it's worth over £200, so it's a fantastic prize to work with. Hi, I'm Kirsty McPherson, I'm a professional hair and makeup artist. Hi Kirsty, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Okay, so can you tell us a little bit about the prize that you're offering for the Dream competition? I'm offering um, the makeup part of it and I'm also going to offer a skincare consultation. So what we'll go through with um, the, the winner is how our skin is, what we need to improve it, have a perfect glow, um, any products that she needs to add to her regime. And then what we'll do is we'll give her a total revamp makeup and then we will give her the, the revamp on the night. Great, sounds so exciting. Hi, I'm Julien from Santé Wine Bar and Restaurant. Um, I would like to welcome the opportunity of being a part of the Dream Initiative. And as such, uh, I will offer a £50 voucher for whomever the winner will be. So, have you nominated me for Dream yet? The Dream the Makeover. Dream. It's not yeah. Dream, it's a Dream, right, okay. apparently. I don't watch it. It's very Dream, very Dream. You know? okay. The Dream well, Makeover. Well, have you nominated me? <laughs> no, because I don't think you need a makeover. Oh, thank you. <laughs> you little liar. You don't, you, don't, you don't need a makeover. Of course That's you don't. not what you were saying off camera earlier about <laughs> my hair. But anyway, listen, l listen, ladies and gents, you know, if you've got somebody that you want to actually nominate for the competition, then, then you. you know, get the. Get the uh, <laughs> I don't need a makeover yeah. either. Um, then get your, get your nominations in. You know, they've got a website and, and, and things like that. So um, there we go. And I. Cassidy was this week. Who have I got next week? I wonder. I know what happened to me next week's show. I got wet again. Really? Yeah. Who was that? Well, I went to Reed's restaurant and I had to walk down the high street and I got soaked. My hair's all frizzy in it. <laughs> it's, it's kind of it's a kind of a, of a shame. You kind of got bad luck these days isn't it? with the <laughs> with the, the racism. <laughs> you choose what I do. I, I don't choose that at all, folks. <laughs> I do it. It's not like I look out the window and go, "No, I'm going to do what I'm not going to do." She's got it all planned. Mm. So see you next know. week. All I can say, all I can say is, <laughs> Vivian with little black cloud, keep out the way. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you next week.